Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. You know me as the host of the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, but my day is largely consumed as a developer and as a senior partner at Y Street Capital. This development firm is spearheading projects across cities in the U.S. and Canada. Our latest project is a new development project in Colorado Springs. This project is open to accredited investors only who reside in the U.S. If you'd like to learn more about this exciting project, please send an email to info at victorjam.com. I'll make sure you receive an invitation to the upcoming webinar. If you're unable to attend, we'll be recording the session and make sure that you have the opportunity to review it after the fact. If you're already registered in our investor portal, you'll automatically be invited to the upcoming webinar. We're very excited about this project. This project spans economic cycles, and we remain bullish on the project irrespective of any talk of recession or higher interest rates. If you'd like to learn more, send an email to info at victorjm.com. This message is not a solicitation for investment. Any investment that would happen would be by prospectus only and in compliance with SEC regulations. On today's show, we're talking about my forecast for the stock market this coming year. Why are we talking about the stock market on a real estate investment podcast? Well, many investors are investors first and real estate investors second. I happen to be one of those people who has lost faith in the inner workings of the stock market, and I'm heavily weighted in real estate, but I'm not exclusive to real estate. I also hold hard assets like precious metals. I don't invest in the stock market because I understand it. I've been an officer of a publicly traded company. I've watched the CEO of my company go on Jim Cramer's TV show and lie to the investing public. I've seen how little control the investing public has. Now, we've seen significant decline in the stock market value since the beginning of the year. Some companies were priced to perfection, and nothing short of perfection would sustain those valuations. Think Netflix, for example. When you have a $20 bill in your hands and you have a vague notion what a $20 bill is worth, since dollars are our point of reference for most people, you would not trade a $10 bill for that crisp new 20. But how do you value a company? The traditional method is the price to earnings multiple, but earnings are not static. Should you look at trailing 12-month earnings, looking in the rearview mirror is only useful if numbers are not likely to change in the near future. Forward-looking is merely a forecast, and that's subject to change but it could be a better indication of earnings for the purpose of valuing a company. Then there's a perennial criticism of the quarter-to-quarter mentality, which discourages companies from planning for longer than 90 days. Here's what we do know about our current economy. Expenses are rising for companies across the board. Interest rates are up, which makes the cost of carrying inventory higher for virtually all businesses with inventory. Employees are demanding higher wages, which increases expenses for companies. Material prices are rising which increases the cost of goods sold, adding more expense pressure to companies. Many companies are now reporting higher revenues in the past quarter, but declining sales volume. The higher revenues, the result of increased prices, to try and partially offset the rising expenses. It's plain as day that corporate earnings are falling. And while the price-to-earnings ratio is starting to look more reasonable on a trailing basis, the forward-looking multiple is far less certain. We have a trifecta of expense pressures on companies. Could corporate profits be cut in half in the coming quarters? Is that a conceivable outcome? I think it's a more likely scenario than rising profits. There's nothing in the current market conditions, to me, that are screaming rising profits. On a forward-looking basis, since corporate earnings are very likely to fall considerably this year, I predict that stocks still have a lot more to fall from their current levels. People who rode the market wave over the last two years have put their retirement nest egg at risk. For some, the recovery period could take years. Gunshy investors who sold at a loss might be reluctant to make the next buy decision. In a rising market, all bets seem like good bets and everyone looks like a genius. But it takes more than jumping in the water to create a world-class swimmer. We learned all about counterparties in the period following 2008. When someone in the economy experiences hardship, what is the ripple effect throughout the economy? We saw how the collapse of Bear Stearns nearly took down J.P. Morgan Chase and with it the entire financial system. It took an intervention by the Federal Reserve to stop the failure the first of many to come. All investors are looking for a safe haven at the moment, when seemingly there's no safety to be found. Well, I believe there is safety to be found in hard assets. The economy is going to experience a slowdown. That means demand for certain commodities will decline, but upward pressure on certain commodities still exists, and I'm thinking specifically of natural gas, of food, and oil. I believe that gold and silver can also be a safe haven from the uncertainty that surrounds the economy and I believe that real estate is still a good place to be. But 
but I'd be cautious about new acquisitions and make sure the fundamentals on any new acquisition are even stronger than ever. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.